Hi, yes, uh, I'm Breland from UC Berkeley. I'd like to thank the committee for having me out to talk to you today about uh, improving summary statistic-based analysis by learning local genetic correlation structure. I work with uh, Noah Zaitlin at UCSF, so this work was done with him and Danny Park. So the outline of the talk will look something like this. I'll start with the background, uh, then tell you a little bit more about the method, uh, some results on simulated and real data, followed by a summary and future directions. You're probably all familiar with the standard GWAS pipeline, where the goal is to find common genetic variants that are associated with the phenotype. It starts by sampling individuals, doing genotyping, and then for each genotype, doing a linear or logistic regression against the phenotype to compute the effect size. So this works rather well, but a lot of times you want to do follow-up analysis, uh, and this is complicated by a lot of factors. In particular, GWAS data are very large. Uh, and so sharing them takes some time and running analysis on full-scale genotype data with millions of SNPs and hundreds of thousands of individuals is extremely time-consuming. Not to mention that there are privacy issues since certain family name can be determined uh, from genotype data with high accuracy and the fact that simply acquiring the data is very hard and expensive. Um, so one way around this is to, instead of sharing genotype data, share summary statistics because they're small and easy to communicate. Uh, and so in this talk, when I say summary statistics, I mean beta, that is the, uh, the coefficient of regression, sigma, the standard error of that estimate, and z, the association statistic, which is beta divided by the standard error. If we have these, it allows us to develop summary statistic-based analysis. And there's actually a lot of things that you can do with just summary statistics, such as heritability estimation, uh, meta-analysis between multiple studies, fine mapping, which we heard about yesterday, uh, by Farhad, uh, joint testing and imputation of z-scores. So today I'm going to be focusing on these last two highlighted, joint testing and imputation of z-scores. So the big caveat with using these summary statistic-based methods is a lot of times you need to know linkage disequilibrium, and this is very rarely, if ever, shared. In this talk, uh, you know, so there's a lot of ways to define LD. I'm going to be talking about the Pearson correlation coefficient. That is sigma, which is the covariance divided by, there should be a square root there, of the, of the, fair, of the variances. Uh, so a lot of times you'll probably be used to seeing what's down there on the bottom left, which is the plot where red means that it is more correlated. But in fact, we're going to be thinking about it as just a matrix of Pearson correlation coefficients on the right here. The good news is that there are reference panels. And so you have things like 1,000 genomes, which have full genome sequences of, about, of a little over 1,000 individuals from various populations in the world. So the standard approach is to choose a reference population that is close to the study population. So if you're dealing with Europeans, you choose maybe the CEU population. Or you're dealing with Africans, you choose maybe the YRI population. So this works relatively well. But there are a lot of problems with it. Uh, one of the large ones being that the sample size is rather small. Since there's only 1,100 individuals or so from the entire world, you get about 100 individuals per population. There's also local genetic structure even within single populations, where because, uh, where there, because of subpopulations within a, a larger population, individual locations in the genome can be, have a very different structure than they do globally. And these problems are simply are, are, are exacerbated in ad, admixed individuals, where the genome is derived from more, two or more populations, and there's extremely high variability in the local genetic structure. So we need something that's even better than a best guess panel that allows you to assign uh, allows you to assign ancestry proportions to each locus in the genome. So on the on the right here, we have an example of an African American woman who is 66% uh, European, 29 or sorry, 66% African. 29% European and 7% Asian. And you can see how that breakdown is highly variable throughout the genome. So one simple approach would be to use a combination reference panel consisting of genotypes from more than one population. So again, if you have someone that is 60% African and 40% European, you would take uh, 60 African genomes and 40 European genomes and compute the LD matrix. Uh, and, and this has a lot of problems, one being low sample size again. Uh, and the fact that you're excluding a lot of available information. It's also computationally expensive to optimize. If I want to optimize the weight or the inclusion of individuals, then I have to recompute the LD matrix every single time. So what we propose is an approach called adapt mix, which optimally weights a sum of LD matrices. Uh, you compute the LD matrix once for each population and then optimize the weighted sum of those until you get one that close approximates, closely approximates the one for your population. 
This increases the sample size, even for single populations, because it uses all of the available data. Uh, and, it, and it also, you only need to compute the LD matrices one time, so it can be done very quickly. So I'll go over in a little more detail exactly how we do that now. Uh, the, in combining reference panels, the goal is to uh, uh, take perhaps 60% of what's on the left and 40% of what's on the right. Um, but unfortunately, you can't simply multiply them and add them together. Uh, so what we want to do is find a way to efficiently estimate the LD structure of an arbitrarily weighted combination of populations. This is somewhat complicated by the fact that the allele frequencies differ in the two populations. Uh, so rather than just being able to combine them, you need to know, you need a correction factor that accounts for the fact that the allele frequencies differ. Uh, and I won't go into the details of how you do that computation. If you want to see that, you can look at the paper. Um, sorry, the, the effects aren't working, so everything is up at the same time here. Uh, but the, the general idea here is that um, you would get these equations where f of k here is the uh, frequency of the kth population, the variant of var i is the variance in the kth population, pi is the allele frequency, cov is the covariance, and then you compute these quantities. So for example, going back to the, pop, the, the example of an African-American individual, you would have fa being about 0 0.6 and fe being about 0 0.4. And so now we're done with efficiently being able to compute the combined reference panel. We just need a way to efficiently optimize the choice of FK. So the way we do that is to partition the genome into windows. Uh, we use 1,000 SNPs in this work. Uh, and compute the covariance and variance for each window for a given choice of the weightings. Perform our analysis and then evaluate our choice of weightings. Uh, so we start with a random distribution of weights and then optimize using some kind of constrained, optimize alg uh, constrained optimization algorithm. We use LBFGS, which is sort of like a modified Newton's method, but it's not particularly important which one you use. Uh, and so in this work, we're gonna, we're gonna look at uh, imputing Z scores in order to compute the optimal weights, and then to evaluate how, we've, how well we've done, we'll use the mean squared error between the true and estimated values. So if you're not familiar with imputation of summary statistics, I'll go over that a little bit for you. Uh, given a set of association statistics at genotyped, uh, low, low, genotyped SNPs, we want to infer the z-scores at additional SNPs. So this is kind of like imputing genotypes, where you impute the genotypes against a reference panel and then do a regression for each of the missing genotypes. But instead of imputing the genotype, since we don't have access to the genotype data, we impute the association statistic directly. In order to do this, you need to know the pairwise correlations of the SNPs in the window that you have measured, the correlations of the ones you've measured to the one that you're going to impute, and the z-scores of the ones that you've measured. And then you can use a simple equation to estimate the z-score of the one that you're imputing. And then that looks something like, this is probably not gonna work, is it? No. Um, that looks something like this. So for each, if you have a window of 10 SNPs, then you hold out each of the observed z-scores one at a time. So you drop z1, then impute z1 using z2 through z10, and then compute the difference between the estimated z1 and the, uh, and the original z1, and then repeat that for every, every, every step. We're also going to look at joint testing pairs of SNPs. Again, if you're not familiar, this is a, a phenomenon by which you can have correlated variants which, uh, when tested individually, don't show a large association statistic, but when tested together, actually have a large increase in their association statistic. Uh, and it turns out that you don't actually need to do the fit of both of the genotypes, so long as you know the actual correlation, then you compute it directly from the marginal association statistics. Uh, so what we do in this case is learn the weights from imputation and then apply them to joint testing. So we learn the weights, the frequencies, um, and what was described previously, and then we compute, we approximate the correlations using the reference panel correlation that we've just derived. So now I'll tell you about our simulation results. We're going to use the GALA2 genes, environments, and admixture in Latino Americans uh, cohort, which is for 1,200 Mexicans and 1,700 Puerto Ricans. We're gonna use 1,000 SNP windows, generating one phenotype per window. 
uh, and that phenotype is going to be simulated under the null with high probability and under an alternative with an effect size of 0 0.2 with probability of 1%. Then we're going to compute the z-scores. We're going to use 11 1,000 genomes populations to estimate the LD panels. Uh, of note, there are Mexican and Puerto Rican populations in the reference panel, so we can see the extent to which our weights are assigned to the populations uh, that we're dealing with. And we're going to optimize the weights in three ways. So that is, we're going to allow the weights to change based on the chromosome, the window, or the whole genome. In particular, most approaches uh, to dealing with admixed individuals take an approach like three, where you get uh, an assignment of weights for the entire genome, whereas our approach will allow you to break it down locus by locus to determine what the weight is on a, on a local, local scale. We're also going to include genome-wide ancestry and PCs as covariates. Uh, in the estimation. So we find uh, when the best guess panel is included, it is assigned the highest weight. So that's a good sanity check. You can see in the Mexican uh, cohort that they get 0 0.3, and in the Puerto Rican cohort that they get 0 0.3 as well, and that the rest of the weights are assigned to reasonable locations. Uh, for example, you have a large YRI component in the Puerto Ricans, uh, and a large European component in both the Mexicans and the Puerto Ricans. We also tried taking away the Mexican and Puerto Rican reference panels to determine how the weights would be distributed when the best guess panel wasn't available. And in this case, since we have the ancestral populations, it does a rather good job. So you have, uh, you have a large amount of weights assigned here to the European populations, uh, and then a, a large number of weights assigned to the South Asian and East Asian populations of the Mexicans, and similarly for the Puerto Ricans, you have large European uh, and African ancestral populations. So in doing this, you get a large improvement of imputation and imputation accuracy. And as you might have guessed, the windowed approach does work the best. So compared to using the best guess panel, you get about a 28% improvement in mean squared error for Mexicans and a 15% improvement for Puerto Ricans. Now, you'll note that the mean squared error is actually still relatively high, but compared to using the best guess panel, uh, even, even though you have the reference panel for the admix population available, it does very, very poorly. So there's still a long way to go, but there's a huge improvement. Similarly, we get a, a very large improvement in joint testing accuracy compared to using only the best guess panel. It's about a 70% improvement for both populations and, of course, less bias estimates. But I should note that in joint testing, uh, the original mean squared errors were much lower. And so the improvement is, is quite high, but it's perhaps not as important. So I'll tell you now a little bit about the real data results that we've, we've found. We decided to look at the cardiogram plus C4D study, which is a coronary artery disease cohort consisting of about 1,500 Europeans and, so and 1,500 South Asians. It's interesting to note that this is kind of particularly difficult because South Asians have gone ad undergone admixture between two ancestral populations. And again, uh, we get very reasonable results for the weights with them being split mostly among European uh, and South Asian populations with the largest weight being on the GIH South Indian population. And again, we get a large improvement in imputation accuracy, 30% in MSC for CEU and 30% for GIH uh, when we use GIH and, and CEU as the best guess reference panels. Uh, again, uh, the mean squared error is still relatively high, but compared to using either of the best guess panels, we do quite well. And of course, we weren't able to, to look at the diff improvement in joint testing accuracy because we don't have access to the original genotypes to compute the original correlations. So now I'll just go over a little bit about what I've just told you and tell you about a couple of other related things. So we've developed a method to choose better reference correlation matrices for summary statistic based methods. This allows us to apply it to any method that uses summary statistics but needs LD estimates for the result. We've showed improvement in the accuracy in joint testing and, uh, and imputation in admix populations, but again, I emphasize that this can be used in any type of joint test, in any type of summary statistic based method. Uh, I wanted to mention two other recent rel relatively cool papers that came out in bioinformatics, uh, one called DISCO and one called DISTMIX. 
Uh, DISCO imputes summary statistics handling covariates, which is something that we don't do. I haven't mentioned covariates at all because uh, we don't account for them. Uh, but it does require a specific study procedure whereby the PCs are computed in the study and reference populations at the same time, uh, which is going to be somewhat difficult to organize and, and kind of loses some of the advantage of, of summary statistics. Similarly, uh, DIST mix imputes uh, summary statistics and admix populations or requires knowledge of the study allele frequencies, which are occasionally but not always provided with summary statistics. Uh, it, is also, it also estimates it on a global rather than local scale. And as I've emphasized in this talk, and as we saw in the previous talk, uh, local ancestry is extremely important for admix populations. The software is available on GitHub uh, called DATMix. And keep an eye out on the Zaitlin Lab webpage because we're working on an online summary statistics tool where you can simply you can actually upload your data, do all of the analysis online without having to download anything. So it should be really cool. Hopefully that gets done soon. In future work, we'd like to test other summary statistic-based methods such as estimating the heritability and the genetic correlation, try different objective functions for evaluating our work, uh, and try to incorporate gene covariates without access to primary genotypes or without needing a specific study procedure. Thank you for your time. Uh, and I'd like to thank everyone that worked on this project in the Zaitlin Lab, and the Bouchard Lab, and everyone else that listened to us. Uh, particularly, I should thank Danny Park. He's the main author of this work, but he couldn't attend this session uh, and funding. Thank you. Thanks, very nice talk. Um, have you looked into the applications when you use your combined LD fitting procedure for fine mapping downstream? We haven't, but it's a great question. Yeah, uh, I was talking to Farhad a little bit about that yesterday, but we haven't used it yet. It seems like a very promising application. Yeah, yeah, question. absolutely. Thank you.